Hi guys, and welcome back to Addicted Gaming UK. As ever, I'm Rob Sommer, and today we are going to take a look at how you can improve your streams by adding a stinger transition. And you can make that in around about five minutes using Vegas Pro. Okay guys, so here we are in Vegas Pro, and all you will need to uh, make a stinger transition is these three things. You'll need a logo, you'll need a background image, and you will also need a, I like to use a secondary color as well. Something that's going to um, contrast and just add a little bit extra to uh, the transition. These three things are incredibly easy to make. You can use GIMP, which is again a free program um, to make all of these. Uh, the, these background images are just flat colors. They're just like um, color plates. But again, you, you could have anything there. You could have a picture if that's what you want or whatever. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you want me to run another tutorial showing you how to make a basic logo. Right, so to do this, you just drag these all down. You want the logo to be your top layer. Then you want your background image to be your secondary layer. And then you want the secondary color to be the third layer. Zoom in. Uh, you do that just with the scroll wheel. And then what you want to do is just drag these all down because you do not want it to be like five seconds long. Five seconds long is way too long. Uh, drag it down to around about three seconds. Uh, that's what I've used for my stinger. Um, I find three seconds is like cool enough. Right, next what you want to do is select your logo and then click on this little, uh, like the two right angles that are intersecting. That is your um, crop and pan button. And you want to drag the timeline all the way back to the beginning. So in the preview window, you can see this is what we see at the moment. For me, that is a little bit too zoomed in. So what I want to do is just grab this corner, pull it out a little bit. There you go. So we've got like a smaller logo there. And then grab the slider, pull it all the way to the end. Um, and what we want is, actually you can have it just before the end so you can actually see in the preview window what it's going to show. To click this button here, boom, that adds in another keyframe. And then what you want to do is just zoom in a little bit. And then grab this outer ring and just give it a little bit of a twist. And what that will do is you'll get this cool little effect if you just click the play button. You see how the logo just zooms in ever so slightly and does this slight little turn. Um, it just it adds a little bit more to it than just having a flat logo on the screen. Um, the logo itself is only going to be present for around about a second, but you want a little bit of movement in there just so it's got a little bit of excitement there. Right, now we come to doing the actual transition. So click on the transitions tab. That will bring up a list of all the transitions that are included in Vegas Pro. We are going to drop down and go into the Vegas, um, Vegas ones, and we want to select Gradient Wipe. The Gradient Wipe brings in things like you've got your Star Wipe, your Heart Wipe, Expanding Spiral, shit like that. We are going to grab Turbulent Noise. We're going to drag that down to the beginning of the timeline for each of these things. So we want it to be playing forward. We want to increase this threshold to, let's say about 0 0.25. Actually, make it 0 0.2 bitty. And then you want to grab soft noise, pull that down to the second time timeline. Again, you want it playing forward. Uh, you want it to probably be around about 0 0.150. You don't want to increase the gradient blur. Blur will as it says, blur the image, and it just makes it look a little bit muddier. You want it to be quite a clean, um, a clean break. So I would just always leave that on zero, just increase the air threshold blend itself. And then you want to grab soft noise, drag it down to the bottom as well. This one, you want to increase <coughs> the threshold blend. So I think before we had a 0, 150, I'd probably up this to about 0.300 something like that again you want it playing forward so you can see this transition will take around about a second and if you play it now there you go that's the effect you get so you can see it's kind of like it dissolves in 
and then you just want to add the same to the end. So again, grab your turbulent noise, drag it to the end of the timeline this time, and you want to change it to a reverse. Again, type in it, get this, the same numbers. I think it was 0.150 we used last time. Um, Soft noise here. I think that again was 0 0.150. Oops. And gradient noise again. And this one was, was it 300 or something I put it as? I don't know. It doesn't have to be the same. Oop, and we need to do that as reverse. I don't think I did that for this one. If you make a mistake or you forget to do something, you just need to click on this little envelope-y looking thing, the transition properties. That'll open it up. No, I didn't. Boop. Click it on reverse. Right. Now press play and this will show you your transition as a whole. There you see it zooms in, does everything, fades out. Beautiful. Now, we need to look at exporting this because at the moment if we exported it, it's going to have this black background. and You do not want that for a Stinger transition. You want to be able to see... <clears throat> basically you want this scene to change in the middle here where it's like got this whole thing you want during the wipe to be able to see your previous scene and then as it wipes out again you want to be able to see the new scene so to do that you click on file render as and you want to select quick time 7 do not worry if you do not have quick time 7 in the format um, you would only have that if you got quick time installed on your machine uh, QuickTime is a free program, there's no charge for doing it, you don't actually need to use it for anything, you just have to have it installed so you've got it as like one of the codecs that, that you can use to render as. I'll leave a link in the description of this video of how you can get that. Um, it's pretty small, so it's worth having it installed. Uh, then what you want to do is you want to select 3 MPS video, then click on Customize Template. So, <clears throat> as a default, you want to change the template name, maybe... I, I've already done that once, I've got it saved here as Mask. You call it whatever you want, like um, Transition or whatever. And you want to go down to Frame Size, you want to increase that to whatever the size is that you stream as. So if you stream at 720, select 1280 by 720. We stream at um, 1080, so that's what we would select. Then you want to go to your Frame Rate, and again, that's whatever Frame Rate that you are streaming at. So if you stream at 30 frames a second, you want to select this one, which is 29.97. If you're doing uh, 60 frames a second, like we do, it's uh, 59.94. So that's what we would select. And then I think you can leave everything else the same. Oh no, yeah, you want to change this. You want to change video format. You want to change that to animation. Yep, and that's everything you would do. Uh, I'm not going to save this because, as I say, I've already got one saved. Uh, so this is the one that we that I've got saved on my system. It's uh, called Mask. But as you can see, it's all the same. So we've got it as uh, 1080, 60 frames, animation. Beautiful! So we click on OK. And then, this is the important thing. Because it's rendering as um, an animation, the file size is like tiny. It's like 560 kilobytes. Uh, you want your file size to be as small as possible um, because this is in theory going to be coming up quite a lot on your streams you want it to be a small file size so there's not a lot of CPU use um, especially if you're only using one PC to stream we're quite lucky that we uh, for my streams I use two PCs I've got one that runs the game um, and then I've got one that just runs the stream but if you're running everything off the same system you've probably got the game using 60% or maybe higher of your uh, CPU, which doesn't leave you much CPU left to do the uh, managements of your scenes and things like that. So, keeping these file sizes as low as possible is really important. So, just click on render and that will uh, render it out. And we are almost finished. Oh, I need to change the name of this. So, we will call it uh, test. Yeah, test will work. You get a little preview here showing you what you're rendering out. Looks pretty damn cool. It's going to look even better in a second. Right. So that is all rendered. We can close that out. 
Right, go back to your project media and what you want to do is to delete and remove from project. Well, actually, you don't want to delete the files because you might want to keep them for other things. But just remove them from the project. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. All right. And then what you should have um, saved possibly on your desktop or wherever you save your uh, completed renders. You want to drag that back into the air. Uh, into your project and then just drag it down into the bottom and click yes so there you go so this is your your previously rendered video there it is looking beautiful it still has that black background oh no what are we gonna do well what we are gonna do and oh actually one thing you can do well one thing I'm gonna do you don't need to do this uh, I'm just doing this so you can see that this is going to have a transparent background. But I'm going to drag in one of those colour. We'll drag in the red one. Boom. So we just stick that down at the bottom. You can't see it at the moment. But you will be able to in a second. Right. So you want to go to File. Oh no, you don't. You just want to right click on this. Right click on this, then go to Properties brings up this you want to click on media and then down here where it says alpha channel you want to click on straight and then as you can see the red starting to bleed through this now has an alpha channel on it so that is what this is these little gray checker mark that means it's a transparent layer so now if you play it you'll see fades in fades out to that second layer and then you can just delete that well I can delete that but that is you done so again just go to file render as render it back out as your mask click on render again you're keeping the 564 kilobytes average size but that's what you want um, let's put it as test 2 or restorer 2 that'll do Typing is hard with a mic in front of you. <laughs> and just click on render. Boom, that is all rendered out. We will close that and then I will bring over OBS and I will show you how to get that installed into your uh, scene. So, down here you'll see scene transitions. Um, as default, Stinger will not be shown there. You need to click on the plus and then you need to select Stinger. Once you've got Stinger in, click on this little icon. Go to Properties and that brings up here. You want to click on Browse. And then wherever you have your completed videos, boop, click on what you're going to be using. So, Resser. Is that one? Oh, I want to click on this one. Then, time for the transition point. This will depend on the video, the, the transition that you've made. For the one that we've got, it's going to be around about 1500. That's going to be the middle of the um, transition. So when the, uh, the full screen is taken up by your logo. Then you just click on OK. And now, if we click on change the scene, we get our beautiful stinger image. And we are back! And boom, that is how easy it is to make one of those. You can fancy them up as much as you want, change the transitions, um, add in other effects, but there you go. That is how easy it is. Five minutes of your time, maybe like add in another five minutes to make the logo in the background. But no time at all, and I think it looks pretty damn sexy, and it adds quite a lot to the, the quality of your streams going forward. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, why not leave a subscribe, a like, comment down in the uh, comment section. Let me know if you want to see anything else, if you want to see us uh, making logos, maybe some other ideas for things that we can do. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. We'll catch you very soon. Bye!